Hey everyone and welcome back to Planescape Torment. Before we get started, um, I'm a bit sick today. I actually have a lot of... <clears throat> That's the medical term. I have the... Uh, in my throat. Uh, and it's making me cough like freaking crazy. So I've been using... You know, uh, cough drops and other stuff. And I even went to the doctor to <clears throat> get some to clear all that. Um, we're gonna do an episode today because I don't want to let you guys down. But we might might be short, and if I start coughing like crazy, <clears throat> I try to make sure that I'm as not coughing as possible for this recording, so I've tried everything. Uh, but yeah, the second thing I want to do is I just want to, because I know Ellie's not here today, but I know she watches these videos. So I just want to thank her so much, um, especially now that I'm sick. This thing is kind of really helping because I could just sit down and focus on that and it's freaking amazing. And I want to show you, and I only have this, but look what she got me. She got me the ultimate edition of Mage Knight. Now, if you've heard me a long time ago talk on this channel about board games, I want to say two years ago, maybe three years ago, uh, I told you how much I think this is one of the best fucking board games ever. This is a freaking amazing thing. And, uh, and, and yeah, she ordered it. And eventually it arrived <laughs> uh, for me. It was meant to be a surprise, but it just didn't arrive for a million years. So eventually it just ordered it. And it's finally here. And it's freaking crazy because there's so much to freaking play. Um, obviously, I'm just like, it's just the, the thing because, I mean, obviously it's all laid out on the table right now. Mid-game. Or not mid-game, just like prepared for another game. Um... If you like, I mean, I don't know if you're into board games or anything, but if you're into these type of games, if you're into tabletop role-playing games, this is like a board game that is in a way that, and it's freaking, I love it. I don't want to talk about it too much because I want to get into the playing Torment, but I just wanted to say thank you, Ellie. You're awesome. And you guys should play that thing because that thing is amazing. Okay. Resume life. <coughs> Where the hell are we? Were we? Uh, okay, we were in the hive. Hmm. Very carefully drinking the very hot tea. So, uh, yeah, we were just in the hive. We were just doing all the stuff. This is the marketplace area, right? Uh, dangerous alleys, southeastern portion. Uh, we went into this hive dwelling, I believe. We, I don't think we went up to Braskin's Kip. Um, and in general, we want to, like, check out all of these. I think we went in here. But what we wanted to do, right? Like, hold on. Talk to merchants on the right. Is this where we are? Talk to mentions on I just quick save. Did I make a big save? I think I made a big save. Did I make a big save? Talk to merchants on the right is from the previous one. I did not make a big save. Wow. I'm disappointed in myself. Go in, talk to thing. <laughs> it's totally irrelevant. Alright. <coughs> Office of Vermin and Disease Control. After we talked to this guy who explained a bunch of stuff. That's right, Tails. Okay. Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff here. We could just go in. Container is locked. Boom. Okay, we succeeded. Junk and rags. Okay. Can you go in here? Ra junk you add and rags you can also add to these, right? Good. Cool. All right. Uh, the pen stinks of blood and dead rat. Same thing. Board has numbers of rat tails pinned pinned to it. More junk. No, just could you? Uh, uh, okay, give that to him. And this is a door for something. This rusty monstrosity looks like it is used to measure rat bodies. Quick save. Okay, Phineas T. Lort, the. Oh my god, my Roman numerals. I am bad at Roman numerals. The last one should be 9, right? Because it's an I before the X, so that's a 9. So this is 30. Is this 39? I think it's 39. My Roman numerals are not, not great. Um, you see a squat, a squat man with rash-covered skin and several postules covering his face. His clothes seem to mark him as some sort of an official, but they are dirty, wrinkled, and covered with rat hair. As you watch, he idly scratches himself with his stubby fingers. Greetings! 
Ah, ee, the little man shrieks and jumps, startled. Clutching his heart, he takes a deep breath and pushes his spectacles up on his rash-ridden nose. Yes? Yes? And what is it that I can do for you? He scratches his nose and looks up, uh, looks you up and down, studying your scars. I uh, have little to nothing in the till, so if you have to come to plunder the premises, this locale is ill-chosen. I'm not here to plunder the premises. Who are you? Well, why don't you just give me what you have and we'll part as friends. No. I... I am the respected Phineas T. Lort, the 39th, ah, I was right, in charge of his hive branch on the office for vermin and disease control. It is my distinguished privilege, he scratches his chest and puffs up, to inform you that we, in the bureaucratic sense of the word we, meaning to encompass the sigil bureaucracy as a whole, are accepting bounties on all manner of vermin and strays that infest the, he scratches again, fair streets of sigil, hub of the multiverse, and the city which sits at the center of all things, the city by which all other cities are measured. Bounty? Updated my journal. Yes, yes. We, in the bureaucratic sense of the word. Yeah, okay, he just repeats himself. I just didn't want to repeat myself, but he does repeat himself, so... Of the word we, meaning to encompass the sigil bureaucracy as a whole, are accepting tangible proof of the eradication of brain vermin, also known as cranium rats, from the hive area where they have clustered quite thickly for the past many years, as a recent census of the vermin population has shown. I am empowered by the sigillian bureaucracy to pay a bounty of, he puffs up dramatically, one copper common per cranium rat delivered to my branch office. Cranium rat? Cranium rats are a species of vermin that become more intelligent the more of them are in close proximity to each other. One cranium rat alone is but a nuisance that chews at boards and burrows into food, but five, ten, or more, and their intelligence grows until it surpasses even the intelligence of one such as myself. Scratches then sniffs disdainfully. Uh, I imagine that two or three cranium rats might be enough to outwit you, sir. Ha, ha, ha. Another comment like that and you'll be wearing your ass as a hat. How many cranium rats are in sigil? More than enough to last a bounty hunter a lifetime, perhaps several. Um, I had some other questions. Hmm, and your questions would be? Um, as illustrious as you end up in such a place. Well, it is quite an epic tale, you see. I was born here in sigil. Uh, oh. <laughs> So the Lily, the okay. This is such a long tale. You have rested for eight hours. So I've actually fallen asleep and rested for eight hours because I clicked that. <laughs> Cheers is all I get to say. And then I realized that I somehow offended my colleagues and found myself promoted to this branch office and have remained here for the past many years. He sighs and idly scratches his nose. Uh, I had some other questions. <laughs> Um, is the rash of yours contagious? My rash? Contagious? No, no. Well, at least I don't think so. It's a symptom of the position, I'm afraid. The job literally grows on you. He scratches himself again. Okay. I'll tell me about the cranium rats. Tell me more about the cranium rats. Okay, it's the same thing. It doesn't really... Okay, bye. Uh, cool. I don't have any of those. I just have normal rat tail, right? Dirty Rat Charm, and then Dirty Rat Charm. What? Both of us have the same charms. Um, I had Rat Tails, but I sold them? No. I'm unsure. Just unsure. This door is locked. You will need a key. Failed. That won't work. Yeah, that won't, I didn't think that would work. But, okay, so there's a door in there. Enemy paused. Of course. They better not deal any damage to me. Okay, now that we're chasing them, okay. you can chase that guy, and you can chase that guy. This game is stupid. Huh? Okay. What? And Mort is heading up. Oh, he stopped, and boom! Mort is the winner! I wanted to do a commentary stupid thing for a bit. Um, about both of them trying to catch their own... Oh my god, there's more of them. 
who just immediately decided to just attack me. Okay, great. Could you guys fight? No, it's just more, more. It's purely more. Just attack. Okay. No, one damage is all I'm willing to take. So I wonder what happens if I do a. If I completely get out of their range. No, they're just like only. They only. They only have eyes for me. Oh, now I have, we've got six now. <laughs> why is it? Why? What happened? What did I do? I'm gone. Hive Dweller. Why is the Hive Dweller? Why are the Dwellers want to attack me? What did I do to all of you? Uh... Okay. I, I'm just gonna, like, make a quick save before leaving. All right. Why did they immediately want to fight me? Good. He did. Okay, quick save successful. Where are the other two? They do want to fight. Okay, good. He couldn't really escape too much. And this guy just died very quickly as well. Good. Good. Can you not push the bottom of the screen up whenever you do that? Look at that, the bottom of the screen, they just push it up. Okay, done, good. Took slight amount of damage, but everything's fine. Just gonna have to go and sell those. I was already in here, wasn't I? I believe I was. Collector, harlot, 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 thug, thug, thug. I'm gone. Crier of S. Anon, harlot, harlot. Let's go in here and then talk to the crier. Small dwelling. Save first, steal that, steal second. Talk to this guy. Greetings! You see a pale man standing in the middle of a room. He is hunched over and doesn't look well. I feel terrible. What happened? I'm not sure, but I think a bit of rest will do me good. Can you please leave me alone? Okay, interesting. Nothing to say to that. I'm gone. Okay, Crier of S... of S. Anon. <coughs> Streams of tears have carved channels down this man's dust-covered face. He looks to be a monk or a holy man of some sort, but the dirt covering his body makes it nearly impossible to see the man beneath. He's chanting and rolling his head back and forth. It looks like some sort of ritual. Greetings. The man stops his frenzied chatting and glares at you with his tear-rimmed eyes. He opens his parched mouth to speak, but all he can manage is a withered croak. What's wrong? Why are you crying? I. his voice is so hoarse that it... Sounds like he has been without water for days. As you watch, a tear trickles down his face. I am a crier of Asano. Uh, who is that? Who is this? No. The man throws back his head and gives a rasping laugh. It sounds brutal and defeated. Esanon, it is not a man, but a city. Why do you cry for a city? The crier, not the, the crier. Uh, we cry its name because S. Anon must not be forgotten. All the criers of S. Anon carry this burden. You mourn a city. Why do you do such a thing? Because its name is all that remains. Its avenues of light. Its great spiraling parks. When it was laid waste and reduced to memory, only three score of its people survived. It was our duty to see that its name was remembered across the plains. Many criers of S. Anon have died for the sake of remembering. Many. If it places you and the others at risk, why don't you stop? The tears I shed to dust that cloaks me. These things are as nothing compared to what awaits should I give up my sacred burden. We must see to it that its name is remembered. We are living memorials to its passage. If that's so, then what happens if you all die? A fresh tear springs to the crier's eye. Even his dust-caked face cannot disguise his look of despair. I do not know. We criers of Essanon cannot mourn it forever. Even now, the dust clings to our robes. The spit dries in our mouths. Our bodies wither and die. Is there any way I could help you? You are kind to ask. The crier shakes his head. Unless you can immortalize Essanon, there is no help to be had. Does it have to be you that cries Essanon's name? Must be immortalized by a man? Would a tombstone serve? 
Let's do the first one. Doesn't matter. Another man might cry the name, but then he, too, would die. A tear slowly forms in the corner of his eye, then begins to trickle down his cheek. There is nothing to be done. When the criers of Essanon die, so dies Essanon. And perhaps that it, it, that is as it should be. If the city is gone, as you say, then it is meant to be forgotten. It sounds as if your act of remembering Essanon places what remains of its people at risk. Is it worth so much? The dirt caking the man's face cracks, and he snarls, You know nothing! You saw not its beauty, not of its splendor. Would you discard such a memory, such a perfect memory, if you, if you possessed it? Things are meant to die. They are meant to be forgotten. This is my advice to you, Crier of Essendon. If you carry the city to your grave, who have you served? I would not foolishly let such a memory die by placing the last keepers of the memory in jeopardy. It would be better if you spent the rest of your days remembering Essendon with your brothers. What about a tombstone, then? The Crabling's tombstone? Yeah, I thought that would just be the solution. and I, I clicked that instead of the other ones that might be more interesting, but it's like, just let, let's get to the conclusion. It is a stone that records a man's name, his life, and a eulogy. If it serves a man, could it not serve a city that has died? Stones may do such things. Yes, and their lifetime is much longer than a man's. If its name was carved on stone, would SNN memory be served? The man pauses. Would others see this name? Yes, it will be there for all to see long after you have died. The man nods. If such a thing were possible, he turns to you. Where would one find such a stone? In exchange for some copies, I could seek a tomb. Okay, I could go ask for one. If I find one, I could see to it that Essanon's name is carved upon it. Yes, you... Oh, you, you would do this? I, the man's eyes, water up again. You would be setting all the cries of Essanon free, but a score of us remain. The burden of remembering would be over after so many years. I would do so. I'll return when the name is carved. My journal. Okay, uh, I know exactly where that is. Right? It's in the tombstone in the mortuary. So we're just going to go there and do that. But we're going to finish up beforehand. Small dwelling, Braskin. All right. Okay, maybe Braskin is a person. There's nothing in these containers. In loud, booming voice, Braskin asks, What in the name of the abyss are you doing in my house? Leave now before I make you even more ugly than you already are. Okay. What? You again? Unless you have some business with me, I suggest you leave my house. Sorry, wrong house. I'll be on my way. Okay. I will have business with you later. Also, his house is heart-shaped for some reason, which is extremely weird. But, okay. Uh, I wanted to sell my coppers. My, not my coppers, I'm sorry. My bronze rings. Um, of course, I can't fucking remember which merchant will do that, because that would make it easy. Oh! Okay, so the ring, a uh, nut -uh. but the bracelet, this is so freaking random, but sure, sure. This one, okay. Yeah, that's stupid, cranium rat charm. It'll give me one copper for it and I could buy it for one copper. Okay, um, we're just gonna quickly go, so, Actually, let's just take a look. We've pretty much been everywhere. Oh, we haven't been in this area. These things might have things. But I want to do that quest real quick. Oh, wait, actually, I don't want to do that quest. I want to find the person who will turn me into a mage and do that later. Yeah, technically, I want to try to avoid... Um... Tout here, tout. I don't know what a tout is. Jesse Town's person. Yeah, so the question is, where the fudge can I find um, somebody who will turn me into um, mage? Ragpicker Square. I was in Ragpicker Square. I was in the hive. I was not in the buried village yet. Uh, I don't know how to get there. Oh, it's actually through Ragpicker Square, right? I think that's where we are. Uh, and then there is... This portion of the hive, which might have stuff, and the lingering sighs. I don't know. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this. I know how to solve that quest, but let's just do this. Who wants to fight me? This thug? Okay. Oh, Mort can't make it. I'm gone. Okay. We're just gonna run past them, and hopefully they won't randomly attack us because it's. 
completely random if they want to attack or not. Okay. So, we are the northern portion of the hive. Uh, we are now in this part of the hive. So, southeast, right? New, 27. Southeast looking for me. Mug. Just gonna, just gonna do this. Looking for a mage. I'm gone. There's some people who are very much on the edge of the map. <laughs> but I guess that's okay. There appears to be a gutter of some sort. It looks as though it has seen little use. Drunk, drunk. Thug, 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 Amarisa. They deal, they're dealing a little bit of damage to me, but whatever. And they've attacked me, like, w what am I supposed to do? They're really trying to attack me. Okay, I'm gonna quick save. I do want to see what he said, not the combat log. Dialogue window. So that's the thing, the, um, why is it over here? So the Mort said something, but I didn't catch it because I was focusing on the, the combat, so whatever. I'm Marissa. You see a young woman dressed in a tight leather bodice and leggings. She smells faintly of cheap perfume, and her face, though pretty, is painted with garish makeup. She smiles coyly as she sees you. Seeking some company, love? No, but I had some questions. Sorry, love, I don't stand here to answer the questions of passerby. Sure you would like a little company? Hmm? No. Okay, that, never mind, Amarissa. There's not much to say. What is this? Vines is a building of withered from the heat emanating from the walls. Whatever. Oh, Jalahi. Wasn't I looking for him? Oh, if you, are you Jalahi? If so, Craddock needs you back at the marketplace. I was talking to. Yeah, yeah. You see a thin man with stained clothes, a hooked nose, and two stubby horns jutting from his forehead. He is stumbling about and muttering to himself. He stinks of brine, vomit, and cheap wine. Are you July? If so, Craddock needs you back at the marketplace. <sighs> this is the thing, I just got like 250 experience points. <coughs> <coughs> okay, and he wants me to say thanks to Craddock. Maybe I just won't talk to him right now, and hopefully maybe talk to him a bit later. Look natural, casual. Barking wilder. Hive thug, starved dog, barking thug. Oh, the barking ones. Those are the ones that, that wanted to fight me. That wanted to fight me. That I, I needed to fight in, in order to make somebody happy. Um, because she was angry with them. Remember? Tattoos parlor. Fell's tattoo parlor. I'm gone. Parlor. This strange looking chair seems to be where the patron sits. A burning skull has been inscribed in the wall. Two symbols of duality flank it. The design seems to be of a shadow casting a shadow. The silhouette of the shadow makes it unclear whether it is a man or a woman. I can't see it, but I see the skull. A pattern of barbed black branches have been inscribed to the wall. This looks like a cloak, but there are no numbers. A clock, but there are no numbers uh, or handles to it. An unusual work of art can call that art. Ooh, there's a bunch more. This tattoo is of a knight black steed with dead white eyes and spines bristling from its shoulder blades. This picture is from a blackened uh, sphere with trails of black trail, with trails of black mist floating away from it. This design shows a series of black dry rivers whose courses divide, uh, cross each other, then flow together. This design is a hollow beast with a tiny demon on its head. Human skin has been stretched across this wooden frame. The skin, skins are covered in tattoos. Yeah, they're all pretty much that. Interesting. Okay, let's talk to Fell in Fell's tattoo parlor. You see a Davis. 
Mm-hmm. But something about it strikes you odd. Uh, it has the same shock of white hair, the same greenish casted skin, the same pair of goat horns. Then you suddenly realize this one is walking on the ground, not floating. For some reason, that makes you uneasy. Mort, can you translate for me? Mort scoffs. I'd sooner be strained through a tannery's bowels than unravel what the goat head's trying to say. You want a translator? Find a sigil native. I see. The devil waits patiently, its hands tucked into its sleeves. Uh, a series of symbols materials above its head then dissipate and a question mark appears. Right, because that's how they talk in a weird way. The bus waits. Who are you? And you can see the symbols above its head. As you're about to ask, I suddenly realize you already know the Davis's name. His name is Fell. As if in response, the Davis inclines his head slightly, and a lone symbol appears above its head. There's a lot of them. It is blurry at first, then resolves into a white oval with a black lightning bolt through it. I feel like I know you, Fell. Fell bows reverently, and a stream of symbols swirl above his head, rotating clockwise, then counterclockwise. It takes you a moment to translate. This is the first time... This is the first time, and not the first time, you have come to this place. Okay. Do you know who I am? Another series of symbols materializes quickly and sharply into focus above Fell's head. The translation comes to you just as quickly and sharply as the symbols themselves, as if, and as if you have translated the exact same string many times before. Yes, but I am not permitted to tell you your story. Why not? You updated my journal. For a moment, there is no response from Fell. Then a stream of rebuses appear, as if trickling out of Fell's mind. My apologies, I cannot. I cannot change the nature of a man. You can't explain why, but the last sentence sends a crawling sensation through your skull. Nature of a man. What does that mean? The symbols that appear above Fell um, almost mirror the previous stream. My apologies, I cannot say. I see. I had other questions. The deepest waits. What is this place? A slow train of symbols materializes around Fell's head. The symbols have taken several moments to resolve, starting with simple lines, then fleshing themselves out into breathing, take breathtaking colors. This is where I tattoo color and life upon flesh and bone. Hmm. Can I see what tattoos you have? Oh, it's... Oh. Tattoo of the Restless Dead invokes bless. This tattoo recognizes your efforts to calm the restless dead of the mausoleum. You may draw upon their gratitude to bless yourself uh, or your companions. This is only a limited number of uses before it vanishes. Oh. Hmm. This is an interesting system. So, does that mean that some of them of greater warding? This tattoo is plus one to arm class. is a minor ward against physical attacks. It hardens the wearer's skin, making them more difficult to hurt in combat. And it's just... This is that. And greater warding is plus two. Usable only by fighters. This is also only by fighters? No, this is by anyone. Wow. Is this a system... Hold on, though. Do I have... I have one... No, I have two tattoo. Three tattoos. I can have three tattoos. These seem really, really good. <laughs> um... I'm going to go back to the tattoos in a second, but I want to ask about other things. I feel like I know you. One of those frames in the back room fell. A caravan train of symbols slowly materializes <coughs> around fell. <coughs> one by one. It is my gallery. Your discarded skins are my canvas. I admire you. I am saddened for you. Saddened for me? Why? Another caravan of symbols forms around fell, this time forming a circle. The mark of torment lies upon your flesh. Strategy tragedies and loss have built themselves upon you like stones upon a foundation you have endured great pain what do you mean i admire you because you have never surrendered to the weight of those losses despite the fact that chains hang on you still these losses blanket this life and all of your past ones you shed lives like a nothing like a molting serpent you are exploring the infinite paths of life Tell me more. Rubies appear, then fall suddenly to the floor, streaming up behind him like a shadow. Take with you this warning. Each of your lives cast a shadow on existence. You must travel to a place where these shadows have gone mad, and regrets have scarred the earth. Is there anything, anything else you can tell me? Do not sign anything. Do not sign anything. Huh.
So you remember that thing where I didn't sign? I, I ended up not signing the thing because something told me not to? He's also saying not to sign anything. So this is the point where I'm assuming a lot of people who know the story of the game, I'm not one of them, uh, who know the story and understand what this means are like, <laughs> but I am not, <laughs> it's like, oh, but I'm not that. Um, I don't know what this means. So I'm very, very intrigued in seeing what that means as we move forward and unravel this crazy, crazy stuff. Very well. Do you feel complete? Oh, do you feel complete? Truth, I don't. In fact, ever since I woke up in the mortuary, I feel like something's missing, something inside. Fell nods and a series of symbols materialize in a halo. You are strong. Keep faith and you shall become whole again. I'll try. Um, you say you've met me before. Do you know how I died? Fell does not respond for a moment. Each of them casting a long shadow. Shadows. Shadows? The three symbols swirl about each other, each leaving a faint black misty trail above them. They take on a ragged edge like teeth and talons and multiply. Where there were three, there's nine. Nine becomes twenty-seven, until the room is a swarm of shadows. Many shadows. They streamed from the darkness, swarmed you, then left you to die. Why? The shadows' symbols swirl into one, then dissolve to be replaced with a simple symbol. I don't know. Um... Can you tell me anything about the tattoos on my body? Fell studies your body for a moment walking around you. He mirrors each symbol as he examines it, then returns to face you. I know them. None are by my hand. Can you tell me about some of them? Fell nods, appearing around him like fireflies. The ones on, upon your back were scribed with a careful hand and are directions for a mind that forgets itself. The symbol that lies upon your left shoulder is the mark of torment. Torment? The symbol sharpens, gaining edges that are almost painful to your eyes. It is torment. It is that which draws all tormented souls to you. Phil nods at your left arm, at your shoulder. The flesh knows it suffers, even when the mind is forgotten. And so you wear the rune always. I'll keep that in mind. Can I see what tattoos you have? Yeah. Okay, I think we've asked him everything else that we can. So Tattoo of Accuracy just gives you a Thaco plus one. That's, that's, those are really cool. Um, Restless Dead, but this is limited uses, invokes Bless. This is Tattoo of the Skull, temporary, equipped, my, plus one Charisma and minus one weak. Equip? Can we just equip and de-equip them? Um, tattoo of the Skull, but it doesn't look like a skull. It just looks like, like the Triforce, but in a weird way. Um... For all Mort's faults, having him as a companion makes you seem more capable and not so much of a stranger to Sigil's streets. This tattoo reinforces that bond, giving you plus one to charisma, and when invoked, it also lends you some of Mort's luck uh, and his ability to shrug off anything that would otherwise cause him to stop talking, such as paralyzation or stunning. Unfortunately, it also gives the user a penalty for their wisdom, which is not hard to understand considering how little Mort has to spare. This tattoo can only call upon its luck ability a limited number of times, and the tattoo's power is exhausted, the charisma bonus will remain. Interesting. Uh, but why is it... Usable only by the nameless one. Yeah. But why can't I... Like... Oh. But this one is like doled out, like I can't buy it or something, and I don't understand why. Uh, the two of bloodletting. Damage with all attack. Wow, these are just really nice bonuses. Um, damn. More strength. Greater might is two. Usable only by fighters. Insight. Intelligence. Uh, of the spirit is wisdom. Action is dexterity. Health is constitution. And there's the greater. Presence is charisma. Enduring base hit points. Warding is just one to armor class. These are all great, but I don't know what I need right now. I really don't. Uh, I don't mind buying like tattoo of warding because I just want to see how this works. Do I just literally have a tattoo of warding? Yes, I literally just have a tattoo of warding and I can just put that anywhere. It's a patch of skin that I can just put anywhere. Okay, that's interesting. I'll keep that because that's pretty good, dude. Uh, so we're just going to keep that. But you too cannot turn me... This as well does not turn me into a thing. Um, 
which is unfortunate. So this is Fel's tattoo parlor, Smurly Corpse Bar. I should go into the bar. All right. Right. Where is the entrance? Oh, it's not this one. It's over here. Ugh. Hey, thugs. Oh, there's a thug. If I go in and then go out, will they leave me alone? Or? Whoa! This smoldering corpse, because Ignis is a corpse. <laughs> These vents blow incredibly hot air from the furnaces below. Save. Uh, we're going to do 28. Smoldering corpse. Which is pretty cool. I'm gone. Drusilla! This is a woman with fading bruises on her face and arms and a look of despairing longing in her sunken eyes. She might have been pretty once, but those days were long gone. She turns slowly to face you, life pours into her features, and the spark of sardonic light that dances in her eyes now makes you wonder if your eyes were deceiving you. Welcome to the smoldering corpse, scar scarred man. Who are you? I, I am Drusilla, and you must be clueless. Don't ask me how I know that, it just shines off you. Clueless, I think not. She smirks at you, and her bruises seem almost to fade. Whatever you say, dearie. Whatever. Answer some questions for me. I, Traveler, what is it you seek? Who are you? I am Drusilla. Don't know that. <coughs> I'm looking for a journal when you happen to have seen. Seen it. A journal. Oh, sure. I've kept an eye out for all stray journals, just in case some scarred man walks into my favorite bar and start asking about it. Do you ask that of everyone you meet? What a fascinating life. Yes, I do for some reason, and none of them know because why the hell would they? You have a smart mouth on you, don't you? Ah, a smart mouth for a smart head. I ain't the Adler Cove you might think, Sod. I get a brain on me. If you're so smart, you should be able to answer my questions. What can you tell me about this place? Here, this is the smoldering corpse. Though the person smoldering ain't dead yet, he's just keeping himself alive till someone comes along to help him out. Sods like to see people in pain come here. Fiends like it. Folks who don't much care for being bothered come here too. The name alone keeps uh, most, out most of the Burks. Who is he anyways? My journal. That despair you saw on her face before flits across it again like a black-winged shadow before she masters herself. That's Ignis, one of the greatest wizards ever to come out of the slummy excuse for a cesspool. They caught him... They caught him, and they opened a channel to the plane of fire through him, and now he's just a doorway for it, keeping himself alive by force of will alone. If someone could douse him for a few moments, it'd give him his life back again, but they don't make enough water to do that. Someone should be able to find something, uh, well, can you answer some questions for me? I, Traveler, I'm gonna talk to him, and he's gonna make me a mage! Maybe. Um, I'm looking for Farad, I already know where Farad is. Who is that burning by the entryway? Yeah. What's your connection to him? Her voice par particularly, practically throbs with a deep ache. I was Ignis's lover, and he, my beloved. He loved the flame more than me, and now he has become the flame. And because I love him, I love the flame. But that's all done with now. Now I wait for him to douse himself. I sell what little I have just so I can bear him. Uh, be near him very well. Nothing, good day. Ebb creaks, creak, creak knees. Okay, he looks cool. I really want to talk to Ignis. Um, we're gonna talk to Ignis and then we're done because we're about 40 minutes. I'm just extremely excited to find out if he'll turn me into a mage. And then we talk to everybody else next time. <laughs> this crackling, billowing creature twists slowly above an iron grill upon the floor of the bar. It may have been, uh, it may have once been human, but now its skin is charred beyond recognition. Streams of fire form a wraith around the creature's body, and the flames lick at the few remaining pockets of flesh, causing them to bubble and run like wax down the creature's skeletal frame. Examine the corpse. <laughs> the heat surrounding this creature is incredible. To your surprise, the iron grill the creature floats above has sagged and bent from the heat. At first, you thought the heat came from the grill, but now you realize it emanates from the creature. As you watch, flecks of ash drift from the writhing corpse and float slowly to the ceiling. Greetings! The thing makes no response. It writhes slowly with the flames. It lives, but it does not seem aware of anything other than the fire that surrounds it. Its skin is flame. Its heart is flame. And you know, within some shadow corner of your memory, that this thing is dangerous. <clears throat> I'm making him twitch, sorry. Okay, so it doesn't seem like he'll be he'll be the one to do that. Um to to turn me into a mage, but mage hunting. Um just 
basically just mage hunting because I want to become a mage for fuck's sake so I can do quests and actually gain experience. But I guess that'll have to wait. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching as usual, and I'll see you guys next week, hopefully, <clears throat> with a better throat. Cheers.